Support for Swan Song is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. What happened? Sangokushi 2 for Wonderswan is the game I'll be looking at in this episode, and it was released roughly a year after the series' initial outing on the Wonderswan on April 6th, 2000. This one felt like a massive step back. Sangokushi, or Romance of the Three Kingdoms as it's known in the West, is Koei's line of grand strategy war games based on Chinese history. This is a genre with lots of inherent complexity that flourished on personal computers with high resolution displays and keyboard and mouse input, so it's a particularly difficult one to boil down into a low resolution grayscale handheld screen. When I looked at the original Sangoku Shifu Wonderswan and its Japanese history counterpart Nobunaga no Yabo for Wonderswan, I noted the awkwardness of their user interfaces due to their insistence on keeping certain elements unchanged from their original PC versions. Having now played Sangoku Shifu, I can now state authoritatively that it could have been so much worse. Sangoku Shifu uses significantly less graphical elements outside of battle. Resources and statistics that used to be expressed with gauges and icons are now represented textually and numerically, which hinders playability for those who aren't fluent in the language. Unfortunately, these resources and stats are written out in hiragana instead of kanji. This may seem like heresy if you're a beginner level Japanese learner, but one thing kanji is really good at is conveying meaning of something very quickly, especially when multiple words share the same pronunciation and as you become a more intermediate reader, you really start to appreciate its presence throughout the world. Pixel hiragana fonts are usually very small and tiring to read, so having the game trade away easily glanceable UIs for ones that are entirely dependent on tiny pixel fonts is kind of baffling. Gauges in particular made it really clear when something was a capped value and how close you were to that cap, and what was a counter of how many you had of something. Now you just kind of have to intuit from the context which of these each number on screen is supposed to be, and take a guess at what its maximum cap is. So I'm really not a fan of these interface changes. The overview map screens were a personal highlight of the original Sangoku for Wonderswan for me, as they featured beautiful dithered topography and nice faction icons to identify who owned what territory. All of the charm from the original's maps has gone in the sequel, featuring a basic outline map with each territory containing a number to identify it in a teensy weensy faction indicator. I understand that something had to give because the maps in this game have far more territories to fight over than there were in the original, but I don't see why they had to end up looking this plain. But the biggest record screech by far has to be the changes to battles, specifically when it comes to map traversal. There are two contributing factors to this. First is the grid. In the original Wonder Swan Sangokushi, battles took place on a plain old grid. If you wanted to move a unit, you would move the cursor to a tile adjacent to them, press the confirm button, and they just moved. Easy peasy. In Sangokushi 2, every other row is offset vertically, so that your horizontal movement options are to go diagonally up or down to the left or right. You can't go straight to the left or right, but you can go straight up or down. The way you express the intention of moving diagonally like this is by first pressing the vertical direction, then the horizontal direction, then pressing the confirm button. This doesn't sound like a big deal when you say it out loud, but then when you play the game, in practice it just feels super slow and clunky every time. You'd think you'd just be able to hit the diagonal, but sadly no, you can't. Adding to the slow and clunky feeling of traversing the map is another system introduced as part of this game, terrain types. Each turn, each unit starts with a minimum of three movement points that they can expend to move around the map, and each different terrain type requires different amounts of points. For example, a standard ground tile may have a cost of three points, but a mountain tile may have a cost of five. On paper, this makes a lot of sense as a system. It takes a lot more physical effort and time to scale a mountain than it does to walk across a flat plot of land, and I assume that's what this mechanic is trying to convey. 
In practice, this means that if the only way to get to the enemy is through a single mountain tile, all of your units will need to pass two or more turns just to cross a tile, as they gain a point if they pass a turn. Every map I ran into during a two hour long play session had this kind of bottleneck on it, and making matters worse, you've got a turn limit to worry about in each battle. Since each world action takes place throughout an entire month of a calendar, you only have as many turns within a battle as there are days in the month. If you don't win before the end of the month, you just lose that battle outright. You can easily burn a third of your turns just trying to move within range of your opponent, with your opponent taking no actions at all during their turn. That's simply not engaging gameplay. As someone who's not that familiar with the wargaming genre, I found that the pacing of the original Sangokushi for Wonder Swan was just right. It was slower and more methodical than most strategy games I'm used to playing, but it still felt brisk enough to be engaging. All it needed was some interface improvements, and I could see myself sinking some serious time into these. But Sangokushi 2 doesn't do that. Things that were good or even great in the original have massive regressions, and just about every mechanic and system introduced in this update makes the pacing slow down to an absolute crawl.